Greetings FBLA members. My name is Max Mitchell. I'm the current national president for FBLA and I have a very special guest with me here today. His name is Cole Simmons. He was the FBLA national president from the years 2013 to 2014 and he's my special guest to interview today to show a success story from FBLA and to show you how you can elevate your feature this FBLA PBL week. Thank you Cole for joining us. Could you give us a little introduction about yourself and, and what you did in FBLA? Absolutely. Uh... Like you said, I was the national president from 2013 to 2014. Um, I was involved in FBLA starting in 2010 um, and have continued to volunteer and come back to state and national conferences in the years since. Um, so I remain involved in FBLA. Uh, after I graduated high school, I went to Stanford to major in computer science. I'm right now on a leave of absence trying to start my own company in commercial real estate tech. That's so interesting. Thank you for sharing that. And we'll go ahead. I have a couple of questions here lined up for, for me to ask you. So we'll go ahead and jump in. Uh, the first question you kind of already touched base on, but I'm sure you can expand a little more. Uh, how long have you been with FBLA PBL and what inspired you to get involved in the first place? Yeah, so I probably joined my first week of high school. Uh, I think if you asked my dad, he'd still take credit for it. But really, it was I was fortunate to have a sister that was a uh, she was a senior when I was a freshman. So as soon as I came in, she just kind of gave me the lay of the land and told me, yeah, you should join this, this, this. Uh, and FBLA was one of those things. So I got involved or I at least joined. I'm not sure how involved I was until competition season came around. Um, one of my teachers encouraged me to sign up by reminding me that my older brother had placed, I think, seventh in the state um, many years prior. So, of course, I wanted to beat him. Uh, so I signed up to do a competition really quickly between classes. Like, I was about to be late, and I just signed up for something that was called Introduction to Technology Concepts, um, which I don't think exists anymore. But uh, that ended up making it to the National Leadership Conference that year. It was in Orlando. Um, and that was really the first thing, first time that I had seen FBLA on that scale. Outside of my chapter, met people from across the country. I was blown away at the whole scale of it. Uh, and the rest is history. Started getting more involved on the uh, first, the regional, then the state, and then finally the national level. Perfect. Uh, I mean, that's such an interesting story to hear that your brother was in it. And then, of course, you had to beat him. So you got involved. Um, the second question, you know, you mentioned that you majored in computer science. Your, your major is computer science at Stanford and that you want to start your own um, startup in, in the real estate tech industry. Can you tell us about how FBLA has influenced your college and career decisions? Yeah, so as far as college decisions, I mean, I, FBLA, like I would not have gotten into Stanford without it, um, without a doubt. So it, uh, it helped me there. But as far as career decisions, I kind of, I was fortunate that I always knew I wanted to get involved in some realm of software engineering. Um, FBLA did help me solidify that by allowing me to compete in technology events. But where it really helped me the most was having the opportunity in leadership positions to manage a team, um, you know, kind of devise a plan of work for the upcoming year and work with that team to execute um, that program of work. That's really given me a lot of confidence going forward in the company as we hire people um, to see myself in more of a, a managerial position. Because I think, unfortunately, leadership is one of those things that there's no shortage of books or blog posts or videos or motivational speakers about. But I think a lot of the most important lessons you can only learn by trying it and failing spectacularly and learning from that and moving forward and using that information in your next leadership experience. And in my regional, state, and national offices, I learned a lot, mostly by doing stuff wrong. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I would have done differently today, but um, that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, and it's given me a lot more confidence to manage that team uh, within the company going forward. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, my third question is what kind of success stories, you know, being involved since 2010, you know, what kind of success stories have you heard um, from your peers or from people that you've helped with an FBLA uh, as to where FBLA has taken them? Yeah, it's one of those things that I'm going to be really excited to see going forward. Um, 
as far as kind of my peers that graduated around the same time I did, a lot of them are still, uh, you know, in college uh, or graduating this year. So it's it's really kind of cool and kind of scary to see people you went to high school with now actually be like teachers <laughs> and stuff. But um, I, as far as the older crowd, I know um, I still stay in touch with some of the, the national presidents in the years where I was a freshman and sophomore. And a lot of them now are working um, mostly in politics, I guess not surprisingly, uh, working at the, uh, I think, state and federal level, um, helping manage uh, legislative staff and create legislation. Perfect. Thank you for that. And I know that if you, uh, if the members will look at Kimberly Clark's interview videos with some of the other PBL members, they'll see uh, how involved uh, they can get uh, in the workforce with politics and legislative action, if that's what interests them. Um, my I think uh, at least that was the case when, when I was in office. I think the actually most popular profession for FBLA alum um, was medicine. Oh, really? That's interesting. I see. I didn't know that. So, uh, yeah, it's the, it's the soft skills that really help you in any profession that you go into. That's absolutely correct. Um, so, uh, you know, as a member, before you became national president, what kind of benefits did you get from joining FBLA and going to conferences and competing and, and things of that nature? The kind of benefits that I got, um, and, and what I think is really cool about FBLA is that it means something different to every student so as far as what they're looking for and what they end up getting out of it. I and mean, I think a large part of what you get out of it depends on what you put into it. And uh, so for me, I mean, I, I did not spend too long at the local level before I started, um, you know, going for state and national because you only have so many, so many years in high school. But uh, it, the whole experience exposed me to things that I just would not have seen living in a small town in Georgia. Uh, it gave me ex the opportunity to travel to different places within the state um, and also you know, nationally. I went to more states as a result of FBLA than uh, I would have doing anything else. And I think that that's one of the things that's really, um, that did and, and continues to shape my just worldview. Um, is all of those experiences and uh, meeting people of different cultures and different backgrounds. Thank you for that. Um, and as a national, as a former national officer, what are what are some things that you would tell uh, prospective candidates who are interested in running, or you know, a current national president? What what kind of advice would you give them um, as for running for office and then maintaining that office throughout the year? Yeah, for running for office, I mean, I know it's. It's one of those things that you, you spend months leading up to the National Leadership Conference or State Leadership Conference. I mean, really, any sort of running for office, you spend just months preparing for that campaign and coming up with materials and writing speeches and figuring out what your platform is going to be. But really, it's about the members. And so it's easy to focus on the me, me, me. But in the end, what they're focused on is what can you do to make their local chapter stronger, to make the individual member's experience better. Um, and I think you're also depriving yourself of a great opportunity at any sort of campaign booth. If you don't, if you just spend the time kind of robotically talking about yourself and you don't ask them about what their FBLA experience is like. Because to effectively, uh, you know, govern for lack of a better word, um, you have to, understand what all those different FBLA experiences are like. And likely up until that point, that uh, frame of reference is probably limited to your local chapter. So that was one of the, and even if I hadn't ended up uh, winning the national office, it still would have been an incredibly valuable experience just because I got to meet you know, people from all over and ask them, what does your chapter in Missouri do? How do you raise money? Um, what kind of fun activities you provide for your members. And it, it, it's an incredible experience, no matter what level. Oh, interesting. Um, so why do you continue to stay involved in FBLA and give back to the organization, even though you've been out of it for so long? Uh, because 
I just believe a lot in the organization. I believe in the transformational powers it has for the students. Um, I know that when I was a member and officer, a lot of the experiences I had were largely due to volunteers coming back and giving back to the organization. And I just want to make sure that students in the future have those same opportunities. Interesting. Um, and you mentioned that you're, you know, you're involved in a startup as an entrepreneur. Uh, what would you say is, you know, talking about your position, what, what would you say is the most challenging part of being an entrepreneur and being in business like you are? Um, as far as any, you know, tips I can offer, advice I can offer, it's mostly limited to software startups. So as far as entrepreneurship goes and starting a traditional small business, I have no clue what that's like. But as far as uh, software startups go, I'd say my biggest challenge right now, a lot of times it's just prioritization because you have limited resources and um, there's a lot of stuff discerning what's nice to have versus what's a need to have in terms of features that you know customers are going to want and in terms of what's going to make it a more attractive sell to them. Um, that's something that you want a lot talking to them, but you just have to make judgment call one and sometimes you're wrong. Um, so, and I think that's the challenge of really any leadership position is given the resources you have, what's the priority? And that's a really hard skill to develop. Yeah, that's interesting. It kind of leads into the next question. Uh, you know, for an FBLA member um, who's relatively new and wants to recruit at their local level, but, you know, maybe doesn't have all the resources available to them, you know, what are some tips or tricks that you would advise some students to use when recruiting members and, and getting some people involved within their uh, organization? The biggest thing you can do is, I guess, look at what gaps organizations in your, your school are missing um, and what the students are looking for that's not currently provided. I think a lot of times high school students need maybe volunteer hours for other organizations. Um, maybe they're just looking for a fun experience, um, something to do with their friends, um, you know, field trips to get out of school. Maybe they're looking for a way to explore different career opportunities and put what they've learned in the classroom to the test. So, you know, I know one of the things that helped strengthen our chapter the most was we had this, um, we have a corn maze in our town. And every Halloween, they would do a haunted corn maze. And so for all of the um, CTA organizations, so FBLA, FDCLA, HOSA, uh, we'd all volunteer there. And they'd allow us to be the, the scarers. They'd give us, like, the makeup and everything. Um, and so we'd all, you know, get made up and then hide in the corn and, like, scare the passerbys. We got volunteer hours for that. And uh, the corn maze gave money to those organizations based on the number of hours students worked. And then we could use that money to provide the members with uh, some sort of fun experience. So for anybody that volunteered and worked there, they have the opportunity to go on a field trip to you know, the Georgia Aquarium and see how it works behind the scenes and what business and management look like specifically there. Um, so you can really utilize, I think, local businesses um, raise funds because a lot of times I think people are competing for resources when they're trying to raise funds. You do like a bake sale when, you know, five other organizations are doing a bake sale that month. Um, try to, um, and, uh, do something that's fun for the members, beneficial for the chapter. Uh, and that kind of stuff I think will draw members in. We saw a, a huge increase in uh, local chapter membership. In the time I was there, I think just because uh, we, you know, implemented those programs, which allowed more people to compete on the state level, and then people started winning, and then that just was a positive feedback loop into recruiting more members. So there's a lot of different things you can do, and uh, like I said, prioritization is uh, is a hard one, but um, I think really just making it a fun experience is, is crucial. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. Um, and, and given someone in your position, you know, you, you've gone, you know, you're in college, you, you're um, dabbling in some startups. 
what are some uh, what is some advice that you give an FBLA member who is interested in that? You know, from your perspective, having gone through you know college and 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 everything you've gone through, what are some um, things that you reflect on and think that you know, maybe you would have done differently, or or how would you guide FBLA members as they begin to transition into college and and you know the the um, business world? What would you recommend them to do? I don't think there's anything I could because a lot of that is so personal and a lot of these lessons that have to be learned can only be learned through experience. Um, and uh, the ones I learned were just due to, you know, specifically um, the things I did and the lessons I needed to learn at that time. But I think that's just a, uh, one of the things of life. You just got to you chug ahead and fail. And then once you do reflect on, uh, what it is that you would have done differently and move forward with those personal lessons. I know that anything I learned wouldn't be really useful to fall on uh, deaf ears to other students. Uh, and, and reflecting on your time as national president in 2013 to 2014, uh, do you have like a memory that sticks out to you, maybe a state leadership conference or a trip that you went on that just resonated with you even to today? Oh, there's so many. The state conference season has to be one of the most fun times for a national officer because um, you just get to travel all over and I'm excited to see where you end up going next because I know you're going to have a blast. Um, I don't want to name any specific states because I know that like the other ones that I did go to that I don't name, I'm like, hey, what about our conference? But uh, I remember Virgin Islands was something that it had, um, I, it was an opportunity that I never thought I'd have. Uh, I'd never been outside the continental U.S. before, um, but that was, and they welcomed me with such open arms, um, teaching me about culture of that area, um, traditional dances, all that. Uh, that was a that was a really really fun conference. Oh, that's so interesting to hear. Uh, and the final question is, of course, the hardest. How would you describe FBLA in one word? In one word, I would say, uh, again, I feel like it's kind of a cop-out answer, but I would just say it's personal. It's a really, it's a really personal journey for, um, for any individual member. Like I said, in terms of what they get out of it and what they put into it, uh, I know that there's not a single student that would not get something out of it, provided they took advantage of the resources that are available. Um, and so from my personal experience, it was... It was all about um, the officer experience and learning about running a large-scale organization. But for somebody else, that may not be the most valuable learning experience for them. It may be competing and testing out, uh, you know, different areas of curriculum that they've experienced in school that they may think that they may want to pursue as a professional career. Uh, maybe they think they want to pursue a career in accounting, and then they do an accounting event and realize they hate it. Maybe they realize they love it. Uh, that's, that's really the beauty of FBLA to me, is how it impacts everybody differently. All right. Well, thank you, Cole Simmons, for joining us here today as we celebrate FBLA PBL Week and we reflect on success stories and how FBLA has impacted people. Again, if you're interested in checking out some more interviews this week, be sure to check back to our YouTube channel uh, and check uh, interviews that Kimberly Clark has had with other PBL former national officers uh, and, and I, the interviews I've had with other FBLA national officers. Again, thank you, Cole Simmons, for coming by and uh, wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thanks, Max. You too. All right. Bye, everyone.